Welcome back everybody, my name is Robert Doman and in this Chibi Studio tutorial video I'm going to be showing you how you can do semi-seamless transitions between scenes of different sizes. Now that might not make sense, so I'll show you what I finish the video with right now. Here you go. Welcome to the end of the video, people. Uh, in this video, as you can see, we'll make it so when you change scenes, uh, you, you move to the next scene using the same um, coordinate that you that you came in from so that it creates seamless more seamless transitions than would be impossible if we just plonked the player down in a specific location and uh, as you can see here it is uh, consistent and uh, yeah back to you in the studio so as you can see you can travel between scenes and uh, the position in the scene uh, basically is remembered and you can travel from piece to piece as if um as if it was a smartly connected map so um let's have a talk about how i how we got there and uh, i haven't actually made it yet so let's make it together first of all i am in tiled tiled um i'm making these different size scenes as we saw so that they can all be pieced to uh, together separately um, and we have this tile set, and this tile set is from um, Pixel Nook on itch.io. I'll put the link down in the description. There's a few others that he has made here as well, um, and they are pay what you like. So um, if you are helped out by him, I recommend dropping him a few dollars at least. And uh, we, when we pull this into tiled, and I've made... Uh, Tiled tutorials before, and there's better ones on uh, YouTube if you um, if you need some help specifically with tiled. But basically, we're going to look at this tile set and import it, create new tile set, and this is what it comes out in. It comes up in. Um, arguably, we'd want to minimize all the the, the uh, negative space in between it, just because it's a bit annoying. Um, it's nice to be able to drag a large area and paint it down. Um, but here we have two layers. We have the grass layer and the water layer. And the water is just to act as a barrier and to show us where and we are, where we cannot exit and enter the scene. And I've made these different sizes, 32 by 32 tiles, 32 by 64 tiles, 64 by 64 tiles, and 96 by 32 tiles. So uh, I've then exported them into the backgrounds folder of the sample project of GB Studio. And if we have a look in GB Studio, we have put them down and uh, you can put them down by clicking this plus and clicking scene. And then you can put down a scene and then you can choose the artwork from the back, uh, from the drop down here. And you can um, choose whatever artwork you like. And I've chosen all the ones that are needed. And if we zoom in, I've also moved this um, scene around so that the collision, um, or so that the water lines up with each scene. And you can imagine doing this in your own game, making an overworld map where the full world is explorable and it's connected via these scenes. But currently these scenes aren't connected. All I've done is use the um, <clears throat> the uh, collisions tool. I've used this magic wand to paint on every single water tile. And that is all that's necessary for this first step. <clears throat> so we've uh, connected, or we've visually connected these scenes. Now what we're going to do is, or well, actually I'm going to set the starting scene to this one, 64 by 64. Let's put it put a player here. I'm going to set our walking speed on the background to two, just so we're moving a lot faster. And I'm going to add a trigger. This is going to use triggers. We're going to um, use triggers to, to move from one scene to the other. So on enter, when we enter this scene, what we want to do is we want to, first of all, I'll actually show what the basic is. We want to change scene. And we then want to change it to the 32 by 32 scene. And we want to put it somewhere like there. And we want to press uh, right. So the idea of this is we move from this scene to that scene. And I'm going to 
copy paste that and put another one in and make it so the scene is putting us there. So now we can go between these two scenes and I'll press play so you can see what that looks like. So we've pressed play, we've run in the uh, test build and we can move around and we can see here we have top right of the scene and we go in, in, into it and boom, we're now in the next scene, we can go back and forth. But the problem with this is that we're put into a location that doesn't match up with the location that we left the scene from. So just like you saw in the intro, I'm going to fix that by using some special uh, and simple uh, script, okay? So let's do that now. So to fix this, all we need to do is store the player position. Store actor position in variables is the correct name of it. And we're using the player as the actor. We're going to create a new, uh, or we're going to rename a variable and we're going to call it uh, PLX, which means player X. And we're going to use rename another one and call it PLY, which means player Y. And if we have a look here, we are only changing the Y value of the player. So let's put the X value where it needs to go. We'll put it, let's put it there. And we'll change the Y value to a expression. We'll change it to an expression because we can actually type in um, the the variable and the variable name is always starts with a dollar sign and it's called PLY. Um, and this means that we can do any adjustments um, from from um, from it, which uh, won't make sense yet. But when we get down here, that will make perfect sense. Um, because we can add or subtract the value that we want. Um, and this means that we can be more granular with it. Also, it's good to teach you guys that you can actually put expressions in in place of numbers in case you need to do any maths or anything on the fly and don't ha and don't you don't have to set a math function and do the maths in a in a you know local variable and then and then place it into this. You can do it all from here. So for example, if I wanted to do, Hmm, PLX plus five minus um, the choice variable that I have from a different scene or something. Boom, you know, you have it all right there. It doesn't affect any of the variables. All it is is an expression to place this Y value. So let's do that again. Let's copy this actually. Let's copy this store player position and variables and put it onto this one. Put it before the change scene event because if it happens after it, then it's not going to do what it needs to do. And it, it goes from top to bottom, um, like in, it carries out from top to bottom. So we have PLX and we got, let's put this where we want it to go. I just want it one away from the trigger box. And then put the PLY as an expression. We could also do a variable and deliberately choose the variable from the drop down. I might as well do that for that one just to show you guys. You can do both. And now let's press play and see what happens. So let's have a look and go back up to here and you can see the water and boom. You see that guys, we've kept our position. And let's test it granularly. You can see how many tiles of the water are on screen at any one time. And obviously this relies on us um, having set up the, the actual maps correctly. And as you can see, when we cut down here, the player's in the middle of the screen and that's because uh, there isn't a bottom of the screen to cut them off and stop the x or uh, the the vertical movement, but when we go there, then we're put down to the bottom of the screen. Um, so there are still limitations of it. However, visually, like no, seeing that the character is closer to the water, is a powerful tool to help you traverse large open spaces in otherwise difficult to uh, you know understand Game Boy spaces. So let's connect all of the maps using these techniques and I'll drill it into you how you do it and uh, we'll see the outcome at the end. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy this trigger across over here and ooh, wrong one, but we can move it after the fact. So I'm gonna put it here. We're gonna change the scene to 3264 
and this value, this information should be exactly the same. I'll do that here again, click that there, and I'll change this scene to 32 by 32. Um, differences, the position needs to be about uh, 29. Let's type 29, boom. And there we go, we got two set up. And now for this vertical one, I'm going to do it completely fresh. So trigger, drag it across, I'm going to store actor positions in variables. We've got PLX already doing, so PLY. And we're going to change scene. What's the name of this scene? It's called 96 by 32. So oh, it already knows. So here we have a challenge, but it's not something that we haven't prepared for. So we need to know where the X and Y is. So first of all, we can kind of put the character somewhat there ourselves. Let's keep dragging. And let's think about this logically. So when we exit the scene, we hover over a, a tile location. It will, it will give us the location down here. Um, so let's say we come in at um, it will be x16 and y64 uh, and we want to come out at um, x79 okay so that's adding hold on let's use the corner of the map it's uh, if more exact so 64 that's exactly 64 tiles so we're adding 64 tiles to the x coordinate that is uh, quite simple because 96 minus the width of this one is 32, it should be 64. So to make sure that when we go from this scene to this scene, we are correctly placing ourselves. Because imagine, right, if we if we took the, the, the x coordinate and we put ourselves into this, we'd, we'd come out down here because we're not adding 64 to push us along to this position exactly over here. So let's do an expression of the value or variable PLX plus 64. And the Y needs to be 2. Let's, let's, yeah, let's leave it like that and set a position, a direction to that. And now the opposite needs to be true for this scene. So first of all, let's set it to the correct scene. It's 32 by 64. I think the value is something like 96, nope, oh, 64 should be 62 or something. There we go, set the direction, it's actually set, there we go. Mm, now we can make it as close to the thing as we can, so it's 62. And we want it to be minus 64 because there isn't 96 tiles width in this scene. It would put us um, far beyond over to the right of the where the actual scene is happening and it would break the game so we're minusing 64 to give us the correct position inside this set of 32 tiles and you can probably see why i'm using the 32 by 64 by 96 kind of um, variations here is because it makes the maths um, consistent and simple but you can use whatever um, works for you really and so let's do the 64 by 64 scene. And this scene is quite, uh, this seems different as well because this is to the very left. But we want to add 32 to this one, I believe. So let's add 32. The reason why we're adding 32 is because we'd come out over here. So we want to add a, add a chunk. <clears throat> and then we're going to copy that, paste it over here. Make sure it's correct width. And then we're going to set it to the correct scene of the 96. I think it was a value of 2x, correct direction. And click back on it. And then we want to do minus 32 so that we're, we're not put in the middle of this scene. Um, so let's press play and see what it looks like. So here we are. We're looking around. We're speeding around. Let's go. Let's, let's go up to this corner edge. Boom, boom. This one works perfectly. Let's go to this one. Boom, boom. Let's check it down here. Boom, boom, boom. Works fine. Works perfectly. 
works like a charm. And here, you can see as well the edge. Let's go here. Lovely. And this side, boom, boom. There we go. And let's just follow this edge. And let's look at the final one. Boom, boom. Check here, there. There we go. And uh, to make this just a bit smoother, you'd make your tile set be, um, you'd, you'd export your tile set and put it in the scene, uh, into the tile set folder. And then you'd click here and you'd say, um, common tile set and then you can you can set it to be the tile set that you used to create your your stuff and we don't want parallax and when you change scene you can make it so it changes scene instantly and it might be a little bit smoother um, but that way isn't always recommended because um, some scenes the tile sets won't match so it's like do you want to be consistent throughout your game if so you would have to limit your tile set and uh, you might not want to do that so um, experiment be free be creative and i hope you found this video useful and go and check out uh, pixel nook for his uh, for his um, tile sets over here and don't forget to check out the documents at gbstudio.dev forward slash docs and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. I'll put my Patreon people up on the screen right now.